Good morning and welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. And if this is your first visit, I'd, I'd truly be honored if you'd consider clicking on that subscribe button. We've got a really interesting topic today as we're riding down I-20 in Louisiana. Gabby's behind the wheel of Trudy Thunder. Several weeks back, I did a video, I did three videos on installing shocks and a steering damper on the F550 chassis, the Thor Magnitude Super C on the F550 chassis. I've had a number of, of viewers ask me about performance and why I didn't do a, a talk about the performance after the install was done. Well, that was because I knew I was going to be making, or I knew that we were going to be making a 2,000 mile round trip journey to North Carolina and back. And I wanted to have a lot of data before we could have this conversation about performance and the, how well do the Bill Steen shocks work on the F550 Super Duty Super C. And to really, really get to the heart of the matter, put a novice driver behind the wheel of the Super C. AKA novice driver. <laughs> That's where Yappy comes in. This is the second time that she's driven Trudy and the first time she's driven Trudy on the highway. And she'd only ever driven the, the Class C Vesta one time and that was on the highway on our way to North Carolina. I've, I've driven Miss B more often. I drove the Class C more than that. Not much more than that. No. no, she didn't drive it very much. Not at all. Anyway, that's a, that's another a discussion for another day. <laughs> what we're talking about now is the Bill Stein shocks and the steering damper. We're also going to touch on the uh, tow setup with the F-150. So from my perspective, I've been driving large vehicles most of my life. The Bilstein shocks are a night and day modification for the, the F550 Super Duty Class C. Super C. So what are your thoughts, Yappy, as, as you're driving here in, in a novice driver capacity? Well, as a driver, they're doing great. It's, I mean... I'm not bumping as much as we would be in the last RV when we didn't, or if we didn't have the shocks. But it's it's really holding up for a pretty smooth ride. I feel like I'm really driving a regular truck, not a big 550 chassis. So we've just come across Mississippi, and now we're in Louisiana. And if you've ever driven I-20 West coming through Mississippi into Louisiana, you know that from about Jackson. Mississippi until you get 20 miles west of the Mississippi Delta, Mississippi River, the road is just, it's horrendous. It's just bump, 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 bump. Uh, so there's no way to totally eliminate that, but the, the shocks have really smoothed out that ride and, and, and made it more comfortable. Now the steering down. Good morning and welcome to Dude RV. Ride quality as well for the driver. Not so much for the, the passenger. Uh, and I, I found that having that better steering damper in place really reduced the fatigue on my arms. And I, I wasn't, and I've got a nerve condition, so a lot of vibration and stress on the arms causes pain and discomfort and numbness. Uh, it, it seems to be a, a great improvement. So, Yappy, as a novice driver, what, what are your thoughts on how the steering wheel feels? Well, it's holding pretty smooth and we just went over really bumpy part of the road and it really didn't feel that bumpy but we've driven this route before and it was even in a car and it was super bumpy but with these shocks it's it's pretty smooth so there you have it from the novice driver now there is one thing that i've noticed since i put the steering damper on the F550, the F450s and the F550s, I think in, in 21, 20 or 21, it may have been 19, Ford 
reconfigured the front end for the 450s and the 550s so that you get a tighter turn. Uh, and I was really surprised when we when we first started driving Trudy how how much tighter the turning radius was versus the van. I don't think Bill Stein has caught up with that because when you make a right hand turn now with the replacement it's not as tight as it is when you're making a left hand turn so it, it most of the time in the motorhome we're driving straight down a highway in a, and as long as we know and we're aware that you got to make a little bit wider right turn which you're making a wide right turn pulling a truck anyway so it it's it's not a deal breaker but it's something you need to be aware of so I had an, I created another video where I walked you through the uh, tow setup for the F-150. You need help with that? And I had a few few viewers ask uh, for a follow up on that. You don't even know it's back there, unless unless you're looking in the, the mirrors. And of course we've got the onboard. Camera. camera system that you can barely see because it's so bad about glare and then I have the, the halo view camera that's actually on the back of the pickup and it really comes in handy because with the glare you can't really tell spacing behind us so that gives us a clear indication of how far we are ahead of a vehicle if we're passing you don't even really know it's back there. What, what are your thoughts as a novice driver? I wouldn't know I'm pulling a vehicle with this this rig at all. I I have to actually look to remember I have a truck behind me. The, the truck is just the the truck chassis is just so powerful. You don't even know it's back there. Right now we're averaging and we have been averaging 9.4 miles per gallon pulling the F-150 with the gas v10 van chassis we that was good mileage without the truck pulling the truck the fuel consumption dropped down to four miles to the gallon or, or worse if we had a headwind or a hill so this this super duty chassis doesn't you don't even know it's back there they it's ready to pull 10,000 pounds and we're just under half of that so it's, it's no big deal. And the tow setup with the receiver hitch and the basket, that all works out really good. We just have to be mindful that we the basket sticks out a little farther than the back of the motorhome and not to back into little trees when I'm parking in a tight campsite. All right, so to sum it up, from the experienced driver to the novice driver. Beginner. The shocks hands down a that's that's a great investment eighty dollars a wheel for the shocks and another what ninety dollars for the steering damper uh, good money spent of course if you're not handy and you don't feel that you can install them yourself you're going to need to pay the labor but still in my my opinion uh, that is one of the best and first things that you should do to your super duty chassis motorhome and the than anything anything else you drive will benefit from having Bill Stein shocks there's gonna there's a link down in the description so that you can find these products on Amazon and as always thank you so much for stopping by if this is your first visit I'd be honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button and for my subscribers thank you so much that's why we do what we do and for my patrons you guys rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear?